Marvel Studios has released 13 movies and 6 TV shows since the debut of Iron Man in 2008. After Iron Man made $585.2 million worldwide, Marvel knew they had something special on their hands, and followed it up with sequels and new superhero movies. The Incredible Hulk later in 2008, Iron Man 2 in 2010, followed by Thor and Captain America in 2011. They all finally came together in the 2012 Avengers movie, which also brought Black Widow and Hawkeye to the team. Now, what do all of these characters have in common, besides the fact that they're superheroes? Oh, yes, they're all white dudes. With the exception of Black Widow, who still has yet to be given her own movie, all of the core heroes of the Marvel Cinematic Universe are male and white. They are the picture of hegemonic masculinity. Hegemonic masculinity is the dominant form of masculinity and is constructed in relation to subordinate masculinities and women. While the characters do subvert this hegemonic masculinity at times, they are still viewed as the ideal of masculinity. Marvel has added more diverse members to its lineup, such as Rhodey as War Machine, Sam Wilson as Falcon, Wanda Maximoff as the Scarlet Witch, and Gamora. Recently, T'Challa, royalty of the African Kingdom Wakanda, was introduced as Black Panther. He will be getting his own movie in 2018. He will be the first black superhero to lead a Marvel film. A year later, Marvel will be introducing its first female-led superhero movie, Captain Marvel. While this is a first for the movies, Marvel has strides ahead on its TV front. It already has three female-led TV shows. A show led by a black superhero and another show led by a blind superhero. In fact, of their six TV shows, only one is led by a typical hegemonic white male hero, and it's the one which has received the worst reviews from both fans and critics. The TV shows are not only years ahead of the movies in terms of representation, but I would argue that they are putting out some of their very best work in the television department. A large part of this is due to the representative nature of their casts and creators. First, the movies only have five leading female characters whose primary role isn't being the love interest to the hero. You'll notice most of these women are white, with the exception of Gamora, who is played by black Latina actress Zoe Saldana. But she is also a green alien in the film. And none of them are leading heroes, all coming second to their male counterparts. Meanwhile, in TV land, there are three women who get to be the heroes of their own shows. One of them, Peggy Carter, played the love interest of Captain America in his movies, but gets to be the lead and hero of her own story on TV. Besides the leading females, throughout the six shows, there are ten other reoccurring women kicking ass and having agencies in their stories. Even if they might be introduced as a love interest, they grow beyond that role and are allowed to be so much more than that. If Thor and Jane aren't together, she isn't going to continue to exist in the story because her role is as Thor's love interest. Meanwhile, if Karen isn't dating Daredevil, she's still going to be integral to the plot and has her own story going on. Another great thing with the TV shows is that there is also representation behind the camera. The showrunner for Jessica Jones is a woman, Melissa Rosenberg, and the showrunner for Luke Cage is a black man, Cheo Hadari Coker. This is important because they both have the life experiences of either being a woman in a male-dominated society or being a black man in a systemically racist society. You can see this truth reflected in their work. Cheo Hadari Coker has described his hero as a bulletproof black man who exists within a systemically racist society. The world of Luke Cage also shows the black experience in Harlem through a variety of different characters. Cheo weaves in black history and references throughout his show. Another gem of Marvel's TV universe is ABC's Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. While the show was started by Joss Whedon, one of the primary showrunners and executive producers is Marissa Tancheron. Marissa is Asian American, and when casting the show, she let it be known that she wanted one of the leads to be Asian. She got her wish, and two of the core cast members on the show are Asian females. Ming-Na Wen plays experienced agent Melinda May, and Chloe Bennett plays newcomer and eventual superhero Daisy Johnson. Chloe Bennett's real name is Chloe Wang, but she felt she had to change it in order to be considered for any roles in Hollywood. She talks about being told she wasn't Asian enough to be the best friend, but wasn't white enough to be the lead. Eventually, she got the role of Daisy Johnson on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and is the show's leading character along with Bill Coulson. She is also the only person on the original team who ends up getting superpowers in a later season because she is an inhuman, meaning she has alien blood which activates a power within her. 
The Inhumans are like the X-Men in many ways. They are an analogy for oppressed minorities and a metaphor for alienation. When Daisy first realizes she is inhuman, she is scared and ashamed and tries to keep it a secret. She learns to be proud of her powers, though, and be confident in who she is. Beyond her personal journey, in the world of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. there is a radical hate group called the Watchdogs who track down and kill inhumans because they're scared of them. Sound familiar? The difference is in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., most of the inhumans are played by minorities. Marginalized groups who experience the oppression in real life are able to actually play the fictional groups experiencing the metaphorical oppression in the story. It feels tone deaf when movies like the X-Men take the experience of marginalized groups and apply it to straight white people and say being a mutant is a metaphor for being oppressed. The X-Men movie even features a scene which plays exactly like a coming out, but none of the characters in the movie are canonically gay. One of the Inhumans on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is Joey Gutierrez, the first gay hero in Marvel's cinematic universe. And when Daisy explains that he is inhuman and that he will have to keep it a secret because people aren't ready to hear it yet, he says he's had to live with a secret once before and was miserable until he came out with it. The direct comparison of the experience of being inhuman to being gay is what elevates the storyline and makes the metaphor more meaningful than other superhero movies which have attempted the same thing. Part alien. Welcome to the club. We call ourselves Inhumans. 